Okay, welcome everyone. I'd like to uh, to uh, express my gratitude and uh, appreciation for everyone that's joined us here, uh, all of our relatives, um, and for those relatives who are, are you know, doing everything they can to be here to join us, uh, and for our relatives that for some reason or another are unable to join us. You know, we're celebrating American Indian and Alaska Native Heritage Month for the month of November, and <clears throat> As indigenous peoples, we usually say that to be indigenous is, is a good day to be every day, right? But especially during the month of November, we're celebrating all of our contributions and inspiration. And you know, we're uh, here at the Indian Health Center, Santa Clara Valley, we're really excited to, to have programming literally Monday through Thursday. And so um, we have different programs uh, going on and so uh, for today, November 18th, we have our special guests, uh, Nico and Buster, joining us from all the way from uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, you know, we're really excited uh, to have a very uh, special uh, a theme today on Native Family Fitness and Movement. But, you know, going back to our, you know, acknowledging and celebrating um, American Indian Alaskan Heritage Month, you know, you know, we're acknowledging you know, a, a living prayer, as these pictures you see here on the right too, you know, of a prophecy that uh, indigenous people share um, of the eagle and the condor coming together. Uh, this prophecy is shared by many indigenous peoples, saying that when the eagle of the north and the south come together, that spirit or that energy represents of us coming together, an, an awakening spirit, you know, that kind of represents over 500 years of colonization. And our indigenous elders believe that this union had begun. And so, um, as you see these runners in 1992, the Peace of D Dignity Journeys began and kind of signified that, that beginning of that coming together and that running all the way from, from Alaska to, to Patagonia, the Wantensuyu, South America. And so, uh, and then meeting at the center of Central America and Mexico. So, you know, today, as indigenous peoples, you know, uh, recognized and unrecognized tribes uh, and detribalized families, as we know in urban settings, you know, we we represent that inspiration. We are those living prayers. And and so uh, we are excited that uh, we have our special guests today. They were there with us last week and they had an amazing presentation. And so, um, you know, so with that, I wanted to, uh, um, Let's see here. You know, want to basically, uh, you know, welcome everyone here today in the spirit of, of, of that celebration for American Indian and Alaska Native Heritage Month. You know, we're here um, to, to remind us ourselves that uh, during this time and you know, we can feel uh, that inspiration. And so my name is Iwi Papali. Uh, community knows me as Iwi. I am descended from both my mom and dad's side, Mexica, Bame Guamare, from the Wigarica Nation and Tribes of Mexico. I'm project coordinator from Traditional Path to Wellness. And on behalf of the Indian Health Center and our planning committee, um, we want to welcome you. Um, it's very, it's very exciting time uh, that we're uh, experiencing and also very, uh, you know, it could be a very sad time, especially during COVID-19, a lot of our relatives um, who are passing. And uh, so we strive to do our best to keep that memory alive and, and close to our hearts to, to walk in a humble way. And so with, you know, walking in a humble way, we, you know, aspire and, and desire to, you know, acknowledge the homelands and where we're living, you know, um, Sometimes in the spaces that we walk and the spaces that we inhabit, you know, we, we sometimes don't know uh, who are the original peoples of this land and, you know, who, who are they? What did they do? What did they call themselves? Um, what was done to them? You know, and how do we potentially benefit from that? You know, what are they doing today? And so today the Mawekma Ohlone, uh, as you see here at this picture, they're rising. They're an unrecognized tribe here in California, but despite their barriers and continued colonization and all those barriers that indigenous peoples face throughout this whole continent, we still strive and we st we're still resilient. And in the spirit of this workshop, you know, and Native American Heritage, Alaska Native um, 
in remembrance of that we want to acknowledge them and thank their gratitude for their continued uh, you know uh, resilience and continue to inspire us to carry their traditions and their ceremonies you know uh, they hunted here they, they fished here they they grew their families uh, in the same way in the spirit that they continue that and so at this time i'd like to call in our our special guest too we have a special guest uh delia uh, her, she, her full name is delia de la rosa navarro and uh, she was with us last week and we were uh, blessed to have her uh, she was born in portland oregon and raised in san jose california she is from the Huichol tribe of Mexico. Delia has been married for 54 years to her husband, Ernie. She has two daughters and eight grand grandchildren and two great grandchildren. She's been active and part of our Bay Area Native community for many years. We are honored to have her here today to share some words of encouragement, along with an opening and closing prayer. So please uh, welcome uh, Delia and uh, you, you have uh, the floor. Thank you so much, Delia. Good evening to everyone. First, I wanna say thank you to the rain that we have been receiving. It's like um, what we need for our cleansing. It feels wonderful. It has cleared the air some. Um, when I was born in Portland, my dad, Called, um, let everyone know in San Jose that he had an Indian baby because my dad was raised as a Mexican man and so I grew up believing that I was an Indian um, so I've always had that in my heart but I've always given honor to my dad as a very proud Mexican man so I'd like to say thank you for the invitation to be here. Thank you for all of you. I know that the COVID, the numbers have spread, they become larger. I know that East San Jose is being hit very hard. So we need to continue to pray for them and everyone to get tested for this COVID. We had a daughter who got the COVID in August. She went to the doctor on the 2nd of August and was not able to return until October 24th because of heart and lung issues along with it. And even when she returned, it took a while for her to be used to walking around and she works in a hospital. So when it hits, it really does hit. And sometimes when you hear of these young people who still continue to just be out there, it becomes scary because it's like they don't believe that it's real, but it is real. So we offer prayers for all the lives that we have lost, all the families that have lost someone. And the sadness of losing someone during this time when you can't even really have a real funeral to say your goodbyes, to have that person pass away in a hospital without any gentleness of your touch is very sad. So for me, it's like, I just want to pray for those people and for all of us that we continue to wear our masks and to be careful where we go if we have to go out. For the seniors, see how many we can help out by maybe getting their essential groceries so that they don't need to be out there. Um, I wanna say thank you for what we do have. What we do have and can never be taken away from us is our dancing, our laughing, and our tears. Because no matter what happens or what we go through, we are, we are always able to dance and to laugh and to shed tears. And that is something very powerful for us, for the people. So, um, 
every day that you hear someone has passed or even if you don't know that person, offer prayers, light some sage, take a pinch of tobacco and offer a prayer. It's just, for me, it's just a sad moment. And I feel blessed that with our own daughter that we were blessed that she is okay now. So please continue to dance, to sing, sing from your heart. Even if you don't know all the words, just sing, continue to sing. Um, prices will be going higher with this pandemic now. And how will those who, not, who aren't as fortunate enough to pay for the higher prices, it will make their budget even harder. <laughs> See who we can help. Reach out to whoever you can. Offer something. Even if it's a homeless person, offer him a sandwich. Offer him a drink. Um, just, we're all humans. We all need help. So, aho, and thank you. Aho. Oh, thank you very much, Delia. We really appreciate your words of wisdom and your prayer and your blessings. Um, so with that, uh, we, we uh, receive uh, the prayer and uh, I'd like to um, um, let's see here. Um, let's see here. So for Zoom etiquette, so here we want to uh, remind everyone that uh, for this particular workshop style in our, our presentation uh, approach, for those of you who probably are not too familiar with our Zoom, uh, we do have some Zoom norms that we like to go over. If you look at your lower left hand screen, there's a mute button and there's also a video button. We are recording this particular uh, workshop and uh, we will be posting it on our YouTube page for our Native community uh, to, to view and also to learn uh, the important teachings and messages uh, that will be shared here tonight. Um, if it's more easier for you to, uh, to listen and to hear more clearly, you can use some earphones. Uh, and please use your, um, your notifications as far as there's something that resonates with you. Clap your hands. Or if you have a question, you can put it in your chat. Uh, and also your presenters here today will explain to you uh, the best way to how to interact with them. Uh, and also too, uh, we wanna thank you for, for having that understanding of this uh, medium that we're communicating in. Uh, we're also having a raffle. So we wanna encourage you to take healthy risks. And uh, you know, when our presenters uh, definitely uh, explain how they're gonna you know, engage with you, um, you know, we want you to take those healthy risks and engage and then I'm going to be taking note of all our participants, so everybody's going to be in a raffle. Uh, last week, we were really excited to inform that Yvette uh, Pinkham, she won last week's raffle, so we're going to be sending out a gift to her. I emailed her, and so she was excited. She's like, I've never won. They hardly won anything. We're like, yay. So, uh, you know, please uh, feel free to ask questions, and like Nico said, that we're, we have um, opportunities for you to, to participate, uh, and also uh, like Nico said, if you have pen or paper or crayon, uh, please, please uh, take that out in case you need it later. Um, I also like to let you know, um, you know, for our presentation today, I like to kind of give you a little uh, background information on Leroy Buster Silva. Uh, he is from Pueblo of Laguna. He's an active husband and dad who loves to travel before COVID-19. He enjoys uh, virtual walks on the beach and drinking his coffee black. I love working with groups of communities to reflect on their wellness journey and to have fun. We also have Nico DeRoyne De Silva. She's a powwow lead and addresses powwow wellness. Uh, she's Otto Misera in Choctaw. She's a mompreneur who loves to help others reach their potential by utilizing their cultural knowledge. She also um, has grown up in the Bay Area, California. Woohoo! 
Staying connected to her roots of the plains was very important in navigating urban life. Aside from homeschooling and her art, uh, she loves uh, boba tea shopping and hopping. Uh, she loves to travel and powwows. So it's with my great pleasure and privilege to uh, have back today our wonderful guests coming all the way from New Mexico. Um, I present to you uh, Nico and Buster. Yes. Thank you very much, Iwi. Appreciate it. I'm going to share my, uh, let me see. Can you give me the power to share my screen, Iwi, please? And just a, uh, just a reminder, you will need a, um, a pencil and a paper. So just to give you some heads up. So, and then uh, you'll be moving around a little bit, uh, not too much. So wherever you feel comfortable. So just to give you a uh, heads up on that. So, so once uh, my uh, PowerPoint gets up there, then we'll, uh, we'll get cracking. And feel free for the little ones to, uh, to join us as well. Oh, there you go. Oh, I don't want the whiteboard. <laughs> uh, let me see. Okay, this is another document. Huh. Sorry, folks, even though technology is great, it also has its hiccups. No worries. Is there anything on my end, um, Buster, or is it I'm wondering? I think you have your mic on. Let me take your mic off. There you go. Yeah, it's not allowing me to uh, share my, my full uh, presentation. It just gives me a whiteboard, uh, advanced, and um, files. What about now? Uh, let me see. Let me see. No, not yet. OK, hmm, that's weird. All right, so we got time, so yeah. it's on schedule. So let's see here. Let me try this. Can you see, uh, can you see this? No. No, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, because uh, I just did a presentation earlier today and it was working. Mm -hmm. So that's multiple parts. Hmm. Oh, uh, you're still on, uh, you're still the host. So oh, okay. Might, that's... Yeah, you might need to make me host. Okay, I got you. So, let's yeah. see here. so Nico and Buster, we'll use that one. Okay. And sharing options. Um... I'm gonna need help with that one. So, if you if you go to the uh, participants, okay, and then go to uh, go to more, where it, click on ours, and then you should have the option of making us. Uh, oh, I see. So there you go. So make as a host. Yep, make host. There you go. Your host. Nice. Okay. Wonderful. Learning on the job. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on with this? Yeah, it's still not allowing me to do that. Oh, that's weird. Okay, well, we, we could just, uh, we'll, uh, we'll wing it. So I'm not sure, what, like I said, what's going on. We'll mess around with it here in a little bit. Um, you want me to use my PowerPoint that you sent? Would that help anything? Or 
you have uh, you know, yeah yeah um, I'm gonna do something really quick and then uh, if you could have it ready to roll then we could uh, we could do that so okay. uh, Sounds good. so let me make you a uh, host again okay okay all right Thank you for sticking with us, folks. All right, so I'm gonna move on to my other screen. Okay, we're good. <laughs> so thank you very much, uh, Delia, for uh, giving us that uh, beautiful blessing and also to, to set the tone for what we're doing today. So this is what we're gonna do right now. So if you're, if you're um, if you're feeling uh, brave enough, if you could jump off of um, on your uh, webcam so we can see your beautiful and have some faces, that'd be great. If not, that's totally fine. If you want to go ahead and stand up or you're just comfortable where you're standing right now, that's, uh, that's totally fine as well. So we're just going to go through some things to get us prepared for this presentation. So as you can see, the, the stress level on our end was a little, was going up. So, you know, we just got to roll with it. We're very happy that we're here. So... Hey, little one, how are you doing? Even the little one <laughs> too. So, um, all right. So I want you guys just to uh, find a comfortable space, sit down or stand up wherever you're at. Go ahead and take, ground yourself wherever and um, wherever you're standing, ground yourself and just let your hands hang down. So let your hands be noodles, okay? Be noodles, noodles. Go ahead and move your hip, neck to the side. And we're going to go to put your, your hands on your diaphragm, on your stomach, and then we're going to take some breaths together, okay? Some big, giant breaths. So little, little ones, I want you to blow my hat off, okay? Okay, everybody take a deep breath in and let it out. Deep breath in and let it out. Let it, one more time. And let it out. Okay, on this last breath, remember after a long day, you finish your chores and everything, you come home from work and you just go, ah. so that's what we're gonna do, okay? It's a sigh of relief. So think about those things that maybe you got stuck in traffic today, maybe uh, somebody um, cut you off in traffic, or maybe you know, you're getting spammers on your email or your uh, text messages, things like that. So think about those little stressors that are going on in your life today. You know, maybe they're bothering you a little bit. So, uh, you know, think about those things, okay? So let it all um, go into your tummy, okay? So think about those things right now that are bugging you, that may be some stressors. Oh, man, I got to wash dishes. I got to take out the trash, things like that. So let it boil up in your stomach, okay? On this last breath, you are going to take a deep breath in, and you're going to give that sigh of relief, okay? So ready? One, two, three. Breathe it in and let it out. <sighs> okay. And a cool thing I want to show you too is that no matter what's going on in your life, that there's always positivity to look out to. You have the little ones in the background, even though they may be stressors sometimes. Our little kids are in the bedroom right now watching a movie. So, you know, if you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, if you're a wife, your husband, or any a partner, anything like that. We have all those little stressors. So what I want you guys to do is, um, you know, it does a little dance that goes like this. So brush your shoulders, okay? Brush your, brush it all off. Let it go into cyberspace. Dele, you said it correctly. We there's a lot of worry going around here. We're on lockdown here in New Mexico. Um, our my Pueblo and Laguna. Um, there's a lot of cases going up. So you know that's a worry for me. So I want to take all that worry and put it somewhere. Um, that it doesn't bother anybody, but we want to acknowledge that everything has happened so that we can take precautions for ourselves. So again, I just wanted to set the tone for tonight and thank you very much. Your presence, your virtual presence is um, uh, much appreciated and we have a lot of good tools for you guys to use. We'll be doing some movement activities here in a little bit. So, uh, so we'll balance it out nicely. Some information and some movement, some information and some movement, okay? So, you know, sit back, relax, and again, you will need a writing utensil and a piece of paper. So make sure to have those handy. And thank you for your participation. And I'm going to kick it over to uh, Nico so she can start us off. And um, Iwi, you can go ahead and uh, put up our uh, slideshow. Thank you.
Okay. Hi, everybody. That was pretty cool, right? Kind of shake your shoulders off. Awesome. Some deep breaths. Um, so I am Nico Deroyne Silva. I am Oto, Missouri and Choctaw. And um, like Iwi said, I grew up in the Bay Area. Um, so Pawa has been such a huge part of our lives, uh, my life. And um, so I like to use that as often as possible. Um, so um, I live here in New Mexico and um, I love coming back to the Bay Area. I'm so appreciative that you guys all got rain. Um, kind of jealous. <laughs> Um, so that's basically me in a nutshell. I'm a mom. Um, I'm, we are expecting, um, so that's good news. Um, and that's basically it. Um. <laughs> All right, I'm back. So, so again, my name is Leroy Buster Silva. I'm from the Laguna Pueblo Nation, New Mexico. And um, I just wanted to, you know, say again, thank you very much for being here, for being a part of this group. So even though we're having some technical dif dif difficulties that we just, um, you know, this is uh, our time to, you know, help the community, especially during this time, because, you know, uh, we'd rather be in the community uh, working one-on-one -on -one and face-to-face, -face, but unfortunately we can't do that right now. So this is our way of giving back. And, um, you know, when, once our kids see that, they're able to, you know, do the same in, in return. So, um, so I want to tell you a little bit about Family Indigenized Thrive. So what family is, is very important. And you guys know that from the get-go, is that no matter if it's your born family or your chosen family, so family is very important no matter who you are, whether it's best friends, whether it's family that uh, you've known for a lot, long, long time or friends that have become family. So family is very important in regard to our wellness. So that's a part of family indigenized thrive. And indigenized, so just because it says indigenized doesn't mean it's just for indigenous people. So what indigenized means is that for me personally, I feel that everybody came from a place in space, no matter where they're at from the world, is that everybody has a history. Everybody's um, part of a place in space, no matter where they come from. So if they came with core values, they came with their connections to the land, they came with stories. So I feel that in a time of of, um, just like a pandemic now, going back to those roots of who we are truly and revitalizing that spirit of wellness um, to create more opportunities for us to be well. So again, the mission of uh, Family Indigenized Thrive is an intergenerational uh, movement to revitalize the spirit of wellness, to well, partnerships and, uh, and to learn about, uh, let me start that again an intergenerational movement to revitalize the spirit of wellness through active community connections and partnership building. So again, part of it being indigenous is learning those connections. Who am I connected to? What am I connected to? So that's the whole thing about indig indigenize and thrive. So granted, we want you to thrive. We want our communities to, to thrive. We want our kids to thrive. So, you know, all of that put together, whether it's our family, whether it's our core, our core values, the land base that we're on, all the culture that cultural teachings that we have in our all our family we want everybody to thrive in those aspects so just to give you a heads up on that so ihui go ahead and uh next uh, next slide and the and the um sort of like our philosophy is uh self connections and community what self is everything starts with yourself so no matter what you're, if you're working on your nutrition, if you're working on your, uh, your fitness or anything like that, everything starts with yourself. So, um, so, you know, thinking about what do I like? What are my weaknesses? What are my superpowers? Things like that. So yourself is at the very begin of, beginning of anything when it comes to wellness. And the next one is connections. Who am I connected to? My family, my friends, my culture, my ceremonial family, things like that. Even the land, I am connected to the land as well. So making those connections and everybody's going to be different. Everybody comes from a different uh, family dynamic. Everybody was... Um, raised differently, whether you have your culture or not, whether you, um, you know, 30 years old and you learned your culture, no matter what the dy uh, dynamic of where you come from, so everybody has those connections. And the last one, community. So again, it's just a way for you to give back to the community. So whatever you have here, you wanna share with the rest of the world, you wanna share that knowledge because that's the only way we are going to uh, thrive in the, especially in these times um, 
in these rough times now is that, and I love what Delia said, is that no matter who you are, whether they're homeless, whether their people need help and things like that. So this is where we actually need to come together as community to spread that love, to spread, spread that respect. So that's what uh, Family Indigenize is. And those are like, kind of like the core areas. So self connections and community. Next slide, please. Okay, so we, don't, uh, we just did our action just a while ago, so we want to roll, roll with the punches. So, uh, so again, going back to uh, Family Indigenized Thrive, this is a family, uh, one of uh, Nico's good friends. Uh, she's from the Pueblo of Cochiti here in New Mexico, and her husband is from the Navajo Nation, and that's their daughter, uh, Malia. So when we're talking about generational wellness, this is what, exactly what it is, is that they're a biking family, they love to do it, and that's what makes them happy. So, uh, you know, they have their own story behind them, their own struggles as well, their challenges, but, you know, that's, uh, that's, those are some of the families that we want to highlight and uplift, being that, uh, you know, wellness is a very important um, aspect in, um, in their lives as well. So, next slide. Okay, so this is the what's up, okay? So... At, like after, um, I like to start with, uh, you know, what am I getting into? You're probably sitting there or standing there. It's like, what's going on? What are we going to be doing? So we did positive vibes. We sent that out. Delia uh, helped us out with that with our prayers and, um, you know, uh, with our little bits of movement we did. So thank you very much for your participation. And today, tonight, you are going to reflect. So think about yourself. Think about your connections and think about your community that you reside in. So maybe, you know, where you're at right now isn't your community. Like for me, I li we live in Albuquerque, um, but my community is in Laguna Pueblo, which is 40 miles west of here. And, um, you know, home for Nico is in the Bay Area. So, you know, when you're thinking about community, you're probably a part of different communities as well. So also to the benefits tool if you were here with us last week we're going to use that we used it towards nutrition and we're going to show you the different variations how you can use this tool into um movement so learning more about physical uh physical physical activity or physical wellness next one is um some of the topics we'll be touching on is movement is medicine so movement is medicine you know medicine makes you feel good you know you send positive vibes to everybody so we're going to talk about how that plays a role in our lives and our experiences, but also to some of the cool things that we've been doing with uh, the local school um, with Pow Wellness. Um, Nico will be doing that, um, sharing more about more stories with that. And also to talking about reflect, practice and build because you have a story, you, have, you know what you're about, you know what you like, but also too, it's nice to spread that, uh, spread that love because health is wealth and you want you to be healthy, you want others to be healthy as well. So I'm gonna um, take you through a steps, take you through some steps in order to, you know, what does that mean and what can I do for my community? And the last one is intergenerational wellness, um, talking about that intergenerational wellness. What does that mean? What does that look like? Intergenerational from the babies I saw in, the, in some of the screens to the elders, you know, no matter how old they are, that, you know, everybody's a part of that process. So it's an intergenerational wellness movement that everybody plays a role. So um, everybody can move, everybody has muscles, everybody can, um, you know, it likes to do something. You just need to find that and stick with it and learn new things as well. And also to, you know, just uh, pass that along as, um, to other people as well. So next slide, please. Okay, so after this, I'm gonna stop talking because I think it's Nico's after this. So history, so all of these things you see on the screen, history, cost, transportation, time, motivation, these are all hurdles that we run into when it comes to wellness, not just physical activity, not just nutrition, but anything we, we, um, that, um, that reflects wellness because you know we do have a history historical trauma which um you know that's still prevalent in a lot of our um native uh, um, indigenous communities as well so cost you know what is that you know dishing out 50 bucks for a membership at the gym when you're talking about physical wellness transportation is i can't get to the gym i don't have an adequate um you know trans uh, reliable transportation um even now you know taking public transportation is probably not the best idea also to just finding motivation to do it. So I'm tired, I don't have enough time in the day to do this. So all of these factors play a role. Like I said, don't push them aside, don't ignore them, acknowledge them. What is bugging you? What is your challenge? Look at them. Yes, that is bugging me. I can't pay 50 bucks for a membership, uh, membership to the gym. I acknowledged it 
And then what else can I do? Be pro, being proactive. And that's something that we're going to be able to um, not necessarily teach, but remind you today. Next slide, please. Okay. So we saw this last time. Um, so self connections of community. So this is a tool. It's only a tool. It's not, uh, you know, set in stone or anything like that. And this is what you have to go by. But this is a tool that we like to use when we explain, um, you know, what, are, what, what is the road to wellness? How can, I re how can I rethink the way I'm doing things in my life when it comes to any type of wellness? It could be uh, like nutrition. And right now we're talking about physical wellness. So fitness, movement, things like that. So you start again with yourself. You go over to your connections and then your community. So, so what throughout this, reflection is a big piece of that. Next slide, please. Okay, and this is how you use it. So if you look in the middle, you see yourself, okay? You, that's you. So what are your superpowers? What are your likes? What are your roots? But also too on the bottom where it says imbalance, no matter how good we're doing in our life, we, we usually have an imbalance and that's cool, our weakness, something we need to work on. So, you know, again, acknowledging that, what are we gonna do about it? How can we shift that from the bottom to the top? So the top meaning, it's not, everything's good, everything's really rolling along, and then on the bottom, those are some things that we need, just need to, you know, pay more attention to and to uh, work on. So it's not a, like, you're, like it's bad or anything like that, so we just need to acknowledge it. So if you look on the left side, connections, those are your support, so family, friends, network, clans, uh, ceremony, uh, family, and nature as well. So you have those connections, and on the bottom, an imbalance, of, uh, an example of that can be toxic people. Um, also, too, toxic relationships, etc. So whatever, you know, whatever is uh, going on in your life that, uh, you know, maybe there's some um, possibly some imbalance. Because I know back in my day that there was a lot of imbalance because of uh, just rocky relationships. Hey, don't get mad. <laughs> just kidding. Um, next one is um, going into um, what does your community look like? What are the assets? What's the history? What is, um, you know, what are the needs? Whether it's, uh, you know, my my uh, community needs more sidewalks. Um, the lights are broken. You know, we need more places to play for our kids or for adults to work out, things like that. So we need more green space. So looking out your window, essentially, and figuring out what does my community have? What does my community need? Um, and acknowledging those things as well. Next slide, please. So this is an example. So again, um, I like to do things. Uh, I just don't like to throw them out there um, and say, do this. Uh, this is an example that I use on myself is that if you look in the middle, um, myself is, you know, I have equipment. I like to go to the park. Um, I bike and I dance, um, you know, dancing with my kids. Um, we haven't been, had date night in a while. So I think it's going to be a while before we do that, before we dance. Um, so those are some good things that are going on in my life as far as physical activity and movement. So the bottom of that is time. So even though I'm at working from home, I just, it seems like I'm more busy working from home than I was going to the office. Also to my energy, um, you know, taking those breaks um, and finding time to actually go and do the things that I want to. And also too, I don't like, I'm not a morning person. So that will be my, that would be the ideal time for me to go work out is um, in the morning, but I just, I'm not a morning person. So that's why it's up there. And if you look at, um, you know, what are some positive connections in my life is wife, kids, family, work, fa um, work, family, network programs and virtual events, engagement, friends and community. Um, going over to the community part of that is parks, trails, open space, uh, virtual um, events um, and groups. So those are some things that are going are positive in my community right now. So recognizing those things, even a, a virtual space can be your community right now as well. And on the bottom, where uh, COVID restrictions, um, we, we can't go as many places as, as we want to, like go to the museum, we can't go to the zoo, things like that. Um, we cannot gather with our friends. Uh, we're very social people, so we can't do that. Uh, traffic also around our community is a little heavy, um, especially the times that we want to go out. Um, and people not wearing masks, that's another thing too, is that, you know, it's like, we're in a pandemic and we're on lockdown, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, just, um, making sure that our family is safe. So uh, regardless of where you live, we all uh, have that imbalance in, in our communities as well. So I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. So I'm gonna have uh, Nico go over um, this exercise with you. She's, um, she's never done it before. So I'm gonna, I give her all the, um, I'm gonna hand off the reins to her.
<laughs> okay, next slide, please. Okay, here we go. How do I move and groove? <laughs> so how do we move and groove? Um, for me, it's, um, I love towel dancing. I love doing the, um, the latest dance craze whatever it is with my kids um they jump online and they do all these crazy what was that the floss yeah <laughs> um i um i'm a little limited on mobility right now because i am pregnant um but before that i would do small little tricks like heating up my food in the microwave and for 30 seconds we just powwow dance or freestyle for 30 seconds until the timer goes off um the kids really like that and it's something really simple and um we just find the time even if it's 30 seconds a minute um and then building up to that Yes, and also too, um, I forgot to mention too, uh, for your paper. So, um, you know, this is a question for you too. It's like asking yourself, how do, how do I move in group? So me, meaning move in group, meaning what do you do for movement in your daily life? Um, whether you go for walks or anything like that. So ask yourself, what do I do to move in group? Maybe I dance from time to time, things like that. So that's something on your, um, on that tool, the benefits tool that you can put there is that how do I move in groups? So write that down. What do you like to do, whether it's your kids, by yourself, things like that. So answer that question. How do I move in group? How do I move my body? What do I like to do? And on the bottom of the, and be specific too, say I like to go on walks in the evening. So again, acknowledging what you do. And on the bottom part of that, the imbalance, what are the challenges? One of the examples I put up there is time. So again, my time is like, oh man, I don't have a time to go for a run or you know i'm tired um things like that so again acknowledging those challenges and basically uh, from these challenges you're going to find out what can i do to um for me to do that whether it's you know i need to get get up early i need to just take a break during the day and go do it so finding again being proactive instead of saying man all these challenges i'm just gonna lay here and go to sleep so again with any challenge that we want to face it um head on and figure out what can we do to do that. So let's move on to the next slide, please. Okay. So next question is, who supports my physical wellness? So who's on your side? Who's in your corner? Who's on your team when it comes to this? Who's going to, you know, that's if you're slacking, they're going to tell you, hey, come on, we got to do this. Is it a workout, buddy? Is it your husband for 47 years? You know, certain things like that. So who is in your team when it comes to physical activity? Whether, you know, it's just a, a slow dance in the kitchen or maybe it's a, it's a, you find a dance a game on just dance or you maybe, like Nico said, is it the latest dance craze that our, uh, our kids, um, you know, participate in? Or is it power dancing in the middle of the, of the room? Things like that. So who supports your physical activity? So name those people, Bob, my mom, Nico, my kids. Next one is on the bottom, who does not support my healthy habits? Is that, and that, those are people that make fun of you. Like, why are you always working out? Why do you have to do that? No, you got, you do that. You're, you know, I don't, I'm okay. I don't got to go out and exercise or what have you. Um, so, so just, uh, so just think about that. Who does not support my healthy habits? as far as physical activity or who would you like to but doesn't and the next one is connections challenges especially now maybe you did have a workout buddy and you can't you can't be around them right now maybe that was a friend maybe that was a family member um maybe there's a group um in your community that you are really engaged with and you can't gather right now so what are those challenges right now as far as COVID 19 restrictions and, you know, and again, those are all because of our health. So think about that, write it down, acknowledge it. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is for your community and you could catch up on this if you like. So again, 
essentially you're looking at your window you're taking a walk around your um around your area and what are those is it, are there a lot of parks maybe there's not so that's why the plus and minus if it's a plus it'll go on the top if it's a minus then it goes on the bottom are there a lot of uh, open space like green space where there's um you know where you can get away from people or you could just get in get out into nature is that um, in your area another thing too if gyms are your thing um it used to be my thing but not anymore um that uh you know that's what people's motivation is is going to a gym and seeing people exercise with them as well is that if that's your thing is that something that's in your community is it in walking distance and do you utilize it and the next one is built environment so built environment could be sidewalks it could be um you know lighting uh street lights things like that uh fences um you know think about that does it need to be is it okay or does it need to be improved and what all of us really look for is safety. Is it safe? You know, what are some times in your area and you said, I don't go outside after dark or I can't even walk down the street because of traffic or, you know, it's just, it's just not an area where I can run uh, or walk just due to maybe high traffic and emissions and things like that. Um, and the last one is other. Maybe um, like if I didn't mention anything on this, um, maybe there's an other part to that. Um, that I didn't mention. So really thinking about, about your, your community, reflecting on what that really means to you. All right, next one, please. Okay, so we're going to, uh, are you guys ready to move a little bit? I know I am. Um, I've been kind of been sitting all day. So I'm going to pause this really quick, and then I'm going to jump on my other screen. So kiddos, it's time to move. So Get up, okay? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go to my other screen and then uh, we'll get cracking. And then it'll be, uh, I'll turn it over to Nico. Okay, fam, thank you very much again for your attention and being here. So we're gonna play a game. So what are these? Go ahead and yell it out. Cards. Those are cards, yes. And what color of card, what color usually comes in cards? What color are these? What color are these? Black. Black red. and red. Yes, you see black and red, okay? So um, if you guys can unmute yourself, that'd be great. I like to hear people laugh and um, have some fun, okay? So what I'm going to do is um, the number one, the number one is going to stand for red, okay? red and then the second the number two is going to stand for black okay so red black red black okay so what you're gonna it's sort of like a guessing game okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna it's um gonna flip a card so you have to guess is it gonna be red or black this next card i flip so put up your one for red put up your two for black okay so everybody hold up your number is it red or black Okay, so when I flip it, so those of you who chose black, you won. So those of you who chose red, you get to do a consequence, okay? So that's just a practice, all right? That's just a practice. So now we're going to go for real. This is the real thing. And it's nothing hard with the consequence. You're going to have to do something physical, okay? So everybody throw up your ones or your twos. So what number do you want to, again, one is red, two is black. All right, cool. Here we go. It is red. All right. So those of you who chose black, this is what you have to do. You're going to have to do uh, 10 lip points. So turn your head to the side and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Man, sending everybody in the wrong direction. Okay. So next one, let's do it again. So hold up the numbers again. So one for red, two for black. Okay, I want to see those numbers. Iwi got one, Delia has one. Your, is that your grand, your grandkid? <laughs> you got two, Nico got one. All right, here we go. Red. 
All right. So if you got, if you uh, chose black, this is what you have to do. So put your hands here. You have to raise the roof 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So let's do one more. One more. Okay. Last time, ones or twos. One is red, two is black. Okay, here we go. What's the lucky number? Put your numbers up. Put your numbers up. All right, here we go. It is black. All right, it is black. So next one you have to do is just go ahead and put your hands up. Then you have to just do 10 punches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, cool. So those of you who work with, um, if you do Zoom meetings or anything like that, all you need is a deck of cards and to have a list of consequences, fun consequences. You can have people do uh, like jumping jacks or leg raises again, or you could do like hugs to yourself, things like that, just to be, just to have fun. So again, I just wanted to share that with you and also to just get the blood flowing. So thank you for participating. And we're gonna go to the other, the other side. So go ahead, Nico. Okay, you guys, let me get situated. Okay, so I want to talk to you guys about uh, movement being medicine and um, what, is, what is our medicine? Medicine is whatever makes us feel good, whatever brings us joy, brings us peace, whatever uplifts us, uplifts others. Um, so for me, medicine is movement, uh, powwow dancing, uh, which because of COVID, you know, we're doing virtual powwows. I'm on powwows.com. I'm looking at different videos. Um, I'm trying to connect with friends. Um, hey, remember, you know, summer of, you know, 2016, we were here, we were there. Um, you know, a lot of our friends are reposting videos just to kind of like, man, I missed this, you know, remember just trying to get that joy back, that um, peace, that pride in our community. Um, lots of people are doing beadwork, their artwork, quill work, um, making moccasins, leather work, um, all that uh, brings us joy and peace and uplifts us. And so um, we also use medicines before we do any kind of gathering. And now we're not gathering as much, but we can still do that in our own spaces. The use of the sage, the cedar, the sweet grass, just like um, Delia mentioned, you know, offering tobacco, our prayers. Um, and like we mentioned last week with the food is the seasons and so there's a season that goes with all of our movements that our body recognizes so we have our springtime and that's kind of when the earth is awakening and um, that's the beginning of powwow season and summertime to get moving maybe we're planting we're out in the field we're getting the sunshine um, so that's traditionally where we would be. And uh, summertime is also a time to celebrate um, our victories, whether it's um, accomplishments, graduations. Um, it's also a time for fasting, Sundance. Um, I know for our family, we, we do travel quite a bit um, for ceremony. Um, also our stomp dances and so we're kind of going into fall where we're gathering and harvesting that's a movement also being out there in the garden and one with nature and um, that's our indigenous movement um, and going into winter time our round dances it's our time to kind of mourn and have memorials and kind of quiet ourselves um, so I want to talk about um, powwow wellness and how that goes into all of what I just talked about and we built a curriculum uh, around that. And hey, wait, can, you, uh, can you go to the next slide, please? All right. So going back to indigenous <laughs> movement, um, so we want to flash back. So what did it, uh, what did it look like? Um, 
So, uh, so what did it look like to different um, indigenous people across the country? So, you know, on uh, pre-contact, what did that look like? So when you think about indigenous movement, we think about those things that were already in place. We didn't call it physical activity. We didn't call it about working out, things like that. So what did that look like? So whether it was, you know, going fishing with daily tasks of, you know, making sure that the, the kids were taken care of or they had to go scout or protect the people, things like that. So that was all a, a part of indigenous movement. So again, it wasn't a party. He's like, oh man, I got to go do that. But it was... The thing that set, um, sets it apart is just the relationship with the land, relationship with each other, and working as a community to a accomplish a certain goal. So I want you guys to think about that when it comes to indigenous movement. Rather, everything's so in, uh, when you think about Western thought, everything's really in, um, individualized. Is that, what can I get? What can I get? Um, but in return, it's like, how can, what can we do together in order to reach a certain goal? So I want you guys to think about that. And also to the space and time. So have you seen one of those maps when it comes to like pre-contact, you see the whole United States as a full color and then come uh, colonization, uh, first contact that it gets smaller and smaller and you know, the land is being stolen and uh, uh, sold off. So it gets smaller and smaller now. Everybody's on reservations and then 70% of our um, um, Native American people live in urban settings. So even that got smaller too, that we're living in within, um, living within uh, cities. And then you look at the way we live now is, you know, we have our own homes or apartments and things like that. It just gets, it gets even smaller. Um, and uh, Nico said it feels isolated, you know, isolation. So what does that look like? So the space and time that we had um, indigenous people back, back in the day, they had many miles to roam. They had, you know, they had no, um, you know, that they don't have this um, perceived time that we do now. It's like, no, man, I got to go make some money for my family or what have you. They all work together to create those uh, different forms of uh, survival or, um, you know, just to live a well and, um, you know, just a, um, a, a parallel life with the, with the land. So also too is that we want to revitalize together is better. So when we go into, when you talk about indigenous wellness, when you talk about indigenous movement is that doing it together, helping one another, um, you know, what are those things? Cause that's something that needs to be revitalized is again, together is better. How can we take care of each other when it comes to wellness and not just, um, you know, just not focusing on the individual. So go ahead, um, Iwi, next one. And then this was uh, the, uh, Power wellness. <laughs> so this is our little guy and uh, he's holding the book. So this is the curriculum that uh, we put together. Um, so just revitalizing culture and what does that look like? Is it your language? Is it music? Is it the songs, the drumming protocols? Um, so that's what we did. And so this is our, our cool little booklet that he's holding. And um, just the movement. So inside here, um, I couldn't find any resources um, as far as dancers. Picture, I could use pictures of dancers, but I wanted the kids to interact. I wanted... Um, <laughs> I wanted them to see people in the community that they recognized. And so I had uh, pictures made, um, photos of myself and Anasita and of the medicines that we use, sage. I want them to color it. I want them to be familiar with it and look at what it looks like. And the drum, you know, what does that all entail? Who who are the keepers in the community that keep the drum and the songs that uh, keep us going? Because without the singers and the drummers, we wouldn't have powwow, we wouldn't have a rhythm movement. Um, so that's me. I dance Southern traditional buckskin and cloth. And um, when I get asked to, I, I do other styles like jingle. Here's you know some other people in our community um, so I really wanted the kids to get a feel and know the names of the regalia because that's important. It's, it's not just, you know, some fancy hat. There's eagle feathers and this is why we wear them and this is who wears them and here's a shawl and moccasins 
and the different types of moccasins from all the different tribes um, and designs. I wanted them to design their own. And um, so when you get them thinking, even adults, you know, some of us have never left our own communities. And um, so I think it's really great to be exposed to different tribal designs, different tribal dress, tribal language in the book. There are areas where you can go home and ask your parents or a grandparent or somebody in your community, what is the word for sage? What is the word for the style that I want to dance? What is the word for my clans? How am I connected? Maybe your tribe has clans. Um, so these are the curriculum that we put together um, just to bring everybody back to the starting point of why we do the movement. It's important to know the language and um, words for what we're doing. Um, the other thing I wanted to uh, talk about was, uh, excuse me, I have some water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, so Pablo Valencia, so we, uh, we piloted this program at uh, the Native American Community Academy here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and that's where I, I worked for 11 years as a uh, teacher and a dean of students. So um, Pablo, when I was there, Pablo Club was just, you know, somebody go and put Pablo music on and you had just uh, kids dancing, unstructured, um, and that was it. So in, um, in figuring out, you know, what could we, uh, what, um, what does Nico bring to the table in regard to powwow and understanding? We wanted the, um, we're planning for the kids to be, uh, you know, structured in a way, but they leave with something. They're doing something together, but they're leaving with, you know, I learned this at powwow club, or I learned this at, so we, that's what we call it. It's more than just a powwow club, it's powwow wellness. Um, and our daughter um, was a kindergarten uh, student at the school. So, you know, just having um, her, seeing her mom, um, you know, do what she does. So uh, dancing powwow and teaching powwow to other kids, whether they were connected to a powwow family or not. So there were some kids who were just curious. They joined the class and they loved it. They ended up staying. Uh, and one thing too that I um, that I always tell, uh, I told Nico is that, you know, just uh, talk about why, you know, parents just, uh, you know, they gravitate, gravitated towards this because it was so different. Um, the kids who never danced powwow, they got into it. And even the, uh, you started learning who are the powwow people in the community. So there was a gentleman that helped Nico with singing. He sang um, uh, Southern Southern style, I believe. And then he started it. So he was, I don't, uh, for me, I don't uh, powwow. So for my son to take that on and to see somebody uh, drumming, that was cool for me to see. And knowing that, um, you know, he had that interaction or he had that uh, resource to go to. So just to give you a little heads up on that. But I wanted to add also is um, even just having the presence there at the school, we had parents come in and say, wow, that was really cool. Can I join? Can I jump on your drum? I had parents come and say, oh, I used to do this as a little girl. Um, I know how to make shawls. Can I donate? Um, so then we started to have this community. They started to come around and be a staple every week. And um, really share what they what they grew up with that was different than what I grew up with so um, even even just having a space and putting it out there um, we created this ripple effect of other people coming and saying oh I know a little bit about that or I know nothing about it and I want to know more um, so that's that's a really cool thing that the community started on its own. Yeah, and, and also too, um, I'm not sure if Huey dropped off the, are you still on here? If you can pop up that, there you go. Uh, thank you. So, uh, so the next one is, um, you know, this is just a collage of the uh, of, um, power wellness. So again, um, learning about, you know, what does it mean to, what are the medicines that go along with, you know, um, protecting yourself? And the thing too is that, um, that Nico did really nicely is what they gathered. So as you see in the, um, the picture there where they're in the circle, that's how, the, uh, how they started their power wellness class. And, uh, you know, they, they did games, but it kind of just reconnected them and that they're, um, you know, they were um, able to, um, uh, protect them, protect themselves with the, uh, for the different uh, medicinal plants. Um, and, you know, what does that mean? And, you know, why is it important that you do that? 
And you look on the bottom, um, there's some, uh, our daughter and her kid, her friend who are working on the, um, on the work, on the coloring book. So they would uh, learn how to, you know, they would um, get structured time and they would dance and they would learn something new and then they would finish the day, finish the class with, uh, with the coloring. So, you know, they have something to work on. They see dancers, they see them in the regalia, they get to learn something, they get to talk and have conversation. So that was cool to see with that. And um, so, so something cool that we do with our uh, programming is we, uh, we uh, created this smile, um, smile method. It's of safe, mindful, innovative, learn and elevate. So that's something that we infuse in this, um, in uh, this practice. So um, Power Wellness is our first one that we did in regard to using smile. So we want to make sure that our kids are safe, that they're mindful of everybody, the relationship, they're mind mindful of themselves and how am I coming into this space? And also too, who is in my space as well, making sure that they're, um, they're um, you know, they respect everybody and being innovative. So they're innovative in their thinking, they're innovative in the way they learn so that they can, you know, obviously the next one is learn. So learning is better together. Um, so that's something that, um, that we infused in there and we, um, really took away for like the kids, they watch each other, especially it, it, it's pretty powerful when you see um, like our son um, copying some other kid doing a grass dance. So they're learning from one another, they're empowering one another. And the last one is elevate. So that's uh, like thrive. We want them to, you know, create these um, opportunities for themselves to be self-sufficient, but also to find that self-confidence in themselves that they're able to, you know, have pride in themselves, have pride in their culture, but also to know that they're supported in whatever they want to pursue, even if it's new, even if they look kind of uh, kind of weird dancing around that, uh, you know, practice makes perfect. And if they continue to learn, they're going to, uh, you know, better be better off with that. So that's just a little uh, peek into what uh, Powell Wellness is. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so um, we'll go on to the to the next one. I think we're, um, we're kind of uh, back on time. So we want to make sure that we, we go through everything. Okay, so the next one is, uh, so this is my favorite part. Um, so making your move. So leaving your mark. So think about yourself. What do you believe in? What makes you tick? And what do you love about yourself? What are your core values? Things like that. But when you're thinking about physical activity, what's something that you enjoy doing? Not necessarily like, oh man, I gotta do this again. But what makes you happy? Is it walking? Is it riding your bike? Is it hula hooping? Is it, you know, gymnastics? Something like that. So everybody has something that they enjoy doing to get yourself moving. So, uh, so a lot of this, um, this talk and this presentation is about reflecting upon who you are as a person because that's where it starts. Um, and one, um, one uh, quote that I came across, one of my nephews, I've uh, taken a couple of trips to Aotearoa uh, New Zealand. And um, I learned what there was one, one of my nephews that I learned from, he has a CrossFit uh, business down in uh, New Zealand. And he's like 21 years old. And he's making moves with his community, which is awesome to see. And one of his posts he made the other day is uh, change your mind to change your body. So changing your mind, the way your mentality, uh, the way you think about it, and then you got to do that first before you start making changes to your body. So whatever that may be, whatever your, uh, whether it's weight loss, whether it's building muscle or just getting started, getting moving. So, um, you know, no matter where you're at, whether you're at the beginning, whether you're an elite athlete, everybody has that, um, that space to get better. So, uh, so whatever you're at right now, those of you who are on the call, um, you know, just, uh, just know that you have a place that you can get better. And again, um, reflecting on yourself, acknowledging those things that are hindering you or the things that you need to do better, but also to focusing on the things that make you happy. So next one is practice. So practice like what, whatever that is, whether it's bike riding, so practice that. Whatever it's running, you know, practice that, that you keep doing it and doing it, you makes you feel good. Because when you do, um, do things that make you feel good, especially with physical activity, your brain is a wonderful, wonderful organ that, uh, you know, it releases these, uh, these chemicals. So one of them is uh, endorphins. So that's the positive feeling that you get, but also too, it makes your body numb to, um, numb to pain. So all of these little things when you're doing stuff, you know, you're releasing um, chemicals into your body that make you feel good about doing that. Another one is uh, serotonin. So serotonin, um, and it's, um, you know, basically it's a mood booster. So sometimes um, people who's, um, who have depression, they have low serotonin levels. 
and they have to take medication in order to boost that. So exercise, movement, that's a natural uh, alternative to, um, you know, boosting those serotonin levels. So, you know, it makes you feel good, gives you motivation, things like that. And the, another one is dopamine. So it makes you feel motivated and it makes you get shit done. So sorry, kids. But it makes you do those things. So if you have low dopamine levels, then you're kind of like, oh, man, okay, I'll do that later. But, you know, if you um, exercise brings that out. So once you get moving and feeling good, you might be sweaty a little bit, but all of those chemicals are going on in your body. So it just helps you become a better motivated person. So just know that every time you move, there's chemicals, there's things happening in your body that you may not know of. So also too, having that self-confidence in yourself too. And I don't like it when people say, I don't have muscles. I don't have this, I don't have that. But if you're moving your body and you're walking, that you use muscles. So just um, you know, think about that. And again, changing your mentality to change your body. So change, um, making, you know, I wanna walk somewhere. That starts with your brain and your body will follow. So. Um, so just an example with that. And also to the next one is build. So when you reflect upon yourself, when you find what you like, you're practicing it, you're making, you're making moves for yourself, you're feeling good about it. And the next one is to build. So when, I, when you think about building your brand, so what are you about? What are your core values? What is it? Why does it make you feel good? Okay, because you can do that. Like with, with Nike, um, like they're, they're saying is just do it. So that's their brand. Their brand is just a crazy swish like that. And um, I think you think it's uh, Nike's the goddess of victory. Um, so that's, you know, their mentality behind that is just do it. So you have that in your, in, your, in your mind, you have that in your heart. So what is your brand? What would you want to say to people to, you know, for them to, you know, um, to feel good about themselves when it comes to physical activity or movement? So building your brand. So the next one is inspiring others. Once you feel, have that, uh, those core values, you know what you're about, you're moving, you're grooving, you're practicing what you, what you love. And um, next part is inspiring others. So inspiring your kids, inspiring your grandkids, inspiring anybody that's around you that sees you feeling good about what you're doing. So that's where inspiring others means. Um, what inspires me is seeing my kids do what we do. So again, I believe that, you know, our kids are going to say what they hear and they're going to do what they see. So for me, my inspiration used to be people. I used to be a personal trainer. I used to be a teacher. So my inspiration was seeing, you know, getting people moving. But now you know, I'm thinking about generational wellness and that means my kids. So me being active, I know my kids are going to be active in the future. If I if we put healthy uh, food on the table, we know they're going to be healthy in the long run because they're going to have those healthy habits. So then again, you're reflecting, you're practicing, you're building your brand, you're building, you know, what you want to be known for, your legacy, and then you're inspiring others. So the next one is sustainability. What sustainability, it doesn't necessarily have to be just with funds like money or anything. I need more money to sustain my, you know, business, whatever. But sustainability with this means that you are passing what you know and what you're passionate about, you're passing it on to somebody else, whether it's a, a mentee, whether it's your, your, hey, your snag or your kids, you know, anybody who, who you feel that's going to, going to be worthy, that's uh, willing to learn, that's willing to make a change in their life. That's the sustainability part. So your legacy, what you're about, anything, that's the sustainability part. So the next part of that is, you know, contributing, investing in generational wellness. So that's the big part of it. And if you were with us last, um, last week, we talked about that. How can you make that, uh, invest yourself in generational wellness? Because you've heard about uh, investing in businesses, investing in financial wellness, but the, this one is generational wellness where you're going to set the tone, you're going to set the stage for future generations to come. So in this case, if you're a parent, you're setting the stage for your kids and their kids and their kids. And if you're a grandparent, you know, you're, again, you can still make a difference. You're setting it for your grandkids and their kids and, you know, all the way down. So, um, so with that, again, using the power of reflection, practicing what you love, building and sharing what you love, also to what you're about, sharing that with others, learning about sustainability and going towards generational wellness. All right, uh, next one, please. Okay, so if you look at this picture again, this is um, Mr. Yazi and his daughter Malia. So this is what building generational wellness looks like. 
So Mr. Yazi, he was, he's an avid bike rider. He got his wife into it, Irma, uh, Nico's friend. And then Malia, she's an awesome uh, mountain biker. So, you know, that's a, again, they, she sees what their parents do. And um, again, just, uh, you know, uh, reflecting of what they, what they're about. They're really about uh, language and culture um, to learning their language and things like that. So, you know, again, that's part of uh, what building generational wellness is. So, um, you know, with all the talks that we've, um, we've talked about uh, last week when it comes to nutrition, you know, what does that mean, building generational wellness? It's like, you know, uh, making sure that you're, you're doing your research when it comes to food, you know, making sure you're, um, you, know, you, you know what you like, you know what you don't like, things like that. We went through that, uh, the benefits tool. Um, and this part is like building, uh, making sure that you, you know what you like doing, you know what's uh, worthy of your time, you know the challenges that you face, whether you know we get older, we have different challenges, whether it's an injury, whether we have a disability, things like that. But you know, it doesn't stop there that we need to you know, be proactive and figure those things out for ourselves that what works for us, but also to ask for help. So that's the biggest thing. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Okay. And we covered this last time is that this is me jumping off a rock onto another rock. And what this um, kind of signifies is you. So you may have your um, tendencies to not try new things, especially when it comes to physical activity, uh, whether it's self-confidence, whether it's a uh, lack of resources, whether it's, you know, you just don't have the time or maybe motivation to do it. But just know that, you know, if you don't make those proactive moves, you're going to stay on that rock that I have my foot on instead of jumping over. And yes, it's gonna be scary. Yes, um, we don't know all the answers is, um, but that's where, um, you know, taking that first step is, yes, I'm gonna educate myself about this. I'm gonna find what I love to do. I'm gonna ask for help. I'm gonna, you know, join, um, ask um, this group for help, things like that. So make taking that first step, that is awesome. Making that jump and not knowing if, um, you know, you're gonna fall on your face or anything like that. So just know that, um, you know, we here, we're here for your, to support you. We're here to you know, guide you in that direction and taking that first leap. And granted too, that's, that's where it starts. That's where wellness starts. It's just taking that first step. A marathon is, um, you know, you take a first stride for a marathon. You take, you know, um, um, you know a first, uh, I don't know, first step You just gotta long. get out there <laughs> <laughs> and try it even if you look silly. I, I always look at tiny tots. They they don't care. They're just out there in the arena at the powwows and they just feel the music and they're going. And it's really beautiful just to see them express themselves. They have no care in the world. <laughs> and sometimes you just have to get out there and just do it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, next slide, please. I think this is the last one. You could just cut it off and we can see everybody. Yes. Okay. So, you know, so when it comes to, again, uh, we, we said a lot and uh, thank you, um, Iwi, for, you know, being our, our mix master, even though we had technical difficulties. Thank you for doing that. And that's the, you know, that's the technology works for us sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. So, but thank you for your help for doing that. So, um, so again, um, these are just necessary tools. Um, you know, if, um, if you have questions about, you know, workouts and things like that, where do I get started? That's the main, that's the main question that I usually get is that where can I, where do I start? Is that, uh, you know, what can I start with? Uh, whether, again, that's the, the tool that uh, we went over earlier is finding those things, you know, what, what do you, what do you like doing? You know, what are your limitations? Things like that. Start out with that. And then, you know, um, and Fitness, wellness should not be about, oh man, I gotta do it again. It should be like, yes, I'm gonna do it. It makes me feel good and this is why I do it. Because sometimes people just go along with things because, you know, their their spouse or, you know, their their somebody <laughs> drags them into doing something. Because I know when Nico and I got uh, got together the first time we did a uh, obstacle course with, it was called the, what was it called? <laughs> The Dirty Dash. Dirty Dash. And she did it because she, she, you know, she's been a good sport. And, you know, I, I would love her if she didn't do it either. So. <laughs> but we got dirty in the mud and that's not really my thing, but we did it. And yeah. um, it was cool. It was a good experience. <laughs> yeah. 
And especially um, another thing too is that, you know, um, when it comes to um, the kids too, I see some, some youngins on the couch. And uh, so, you know, finding, uh, even if it's being silly, jumping around and, um, you know, we find these cool resources on YouTube um, to, you know, just dance and, um, you know, just be, be silly because our kids, they love to just move around. They love to interact with us. And for me, I get so caught up in work mode that I say, I'm going to take a break and go play with the kids and jump around and stuff like that. So, um, you know, just finding those things that work for you, for your space, for your time, your budget, things like that, if it comes down to it. So, so again, I wanted to, um, you know, for me to uh, thank you guys for your time and your your energy, things like that. So, you know, I'd rather be with you in person, in a gathering, something like that. So maybe once uh, this pandemic uh, lets up, then we'll be able to go and visit um, your, uh, your awesome uh, building and, you know, just engage with you. So um, do you have anything? Um, I just want to say in closing, you know, sometimes uh, we just get stuck in a rut. We're just so used to our own schedules and it's hard to break those cycles, especially in our families. And um, that's what we're trying to do is break those cycles. Yes, you can make time for movement. Yes, it can be enjoying um, and make it, make it something, a habit. I can't actually. Yeah. So, um, so other than that, you know, I just wanted to, um, you know, just uh, if you want to learn more about what we do, visit our website at www.familyindigenizedthrive.org. Um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, we're, we're, we're here for you. We're here for the community uh, virtually right now. But, so, you know, I want to thank um, uh, uh, Iwi for, you know, the invitation and definitely, you know, just uh, the chance to interact with people outside of New Mexico. I know um, Nico, she misses the Bay Area and her family. So thank you very much, Anasita, for um, sort of uh, being here as well. And um, so big ups and money blessings to you, Dahlia. Thank you very much for the blessing. And may you get many more blessings in return. So, you know, to you and your family and to your husband of 47 years, you know, that's <laughs> awesome. I always love hearing stories like that. So thank you very much. So with that, positive vibes to each and every one of you. Stay active, stay positive, And uh, we hope to see you again soon. Hey. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much, uh, Nico and Buster. So on behalf of the community, for those of us who have been attending our workshops, we usually say thank you with our hands and we say you're worthy. So I wanna see those hands. You're worthy. So on behalf of our planning committee and uh, the Bay Area, our Bay Area Native community here, we wanna say um, express our deep gratitude, our appreciation for for uh, willing to take a healthy risk and and uh, you know go out of those comfort zones that you're talking about because you really have blessed us with um, not only with your your positive energy and that medicine but with lots of generational wellness teachings and so um, we aspire to ourselves as as facilitators as presenters to to grow and I learned a lot from this workshop and. Um, we are, uh, you, you know, you really shared a lot of uh, wisdom and stepping stones for our community. And I'm looking forward to continuing this relationship in a very positive way. We, we can continue to support you as a family because it's really beautiful, beautiful to say that uh, it's families communicating to families. And that's something that's, that's beautiful. We can, we can all learn from that. Um, so uh, we won't say goodbye, we'll say, uh, see you later, or well, my language would say kino sepa, which means I'll see you later. And so uh, please uh, stay in touch with us. And you always have a home here. You're always welcome. And um, our community here, I, I trust, will appreciate, uh, you know, we're seeing you again. And we have another series planned for in January. We'll see, um, you know, what we can do for them. But in the meantime, we I have a lot to reflect. And so many great ideas we'll probably get feedback from our families after the series and uh, uh, stay well, stay healthy, keep inspiring. Uh, and thank you for joining us for this uh, Native American, uh, Alaska Native Heritage Month because your inspiration is really helping a lot of our young kids, our young ones who are watching. And I've gotten a lot of positive feedback. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up our slide here before we close. Um, let's see here, for, uh, for next week, 
Uh, we have a special guest, uh, and also Nico and, and uh, Buster, you're welcome to join us next week too. Um, we have a special guest uh, for next week, a uh, very good friend. Um, she's out of Sacramento, California, uh, uh, Sage Lapina. Uh, she's going to be providing a workshop on um, native traditional medicines and nourishing your, your spirit. Uh, she's from the Namtipum Wimtu, Northern uh, California tribe here in California. And she has uh, lots of knowledge and lots of experience. Uh, she provides native plant wisdom of traditional ecological knowledge, tech, and then she's also a keeper and medicine, uh, medical herbalist. Uh, and she also works in her day job as at the Sacramento Indian Health Center. So we're really privileged to have her uh, next week too. And we'd love to have you back, Nico and Buster, if you wanna join us. Um, so that'll be for next week. And please uh, invite your families and your loved ones. Uh, we'd love to, to uh, have them register on a link provided and we can send them a link for next week. And that'll close off our, our series uh, for the month. And then uh, for everybody on the raffle, again, I'm gonna put everybody on the list. So uh, be look out for your emails if you win a raffle. Um, and we will be sending that, uh, that gift as soon as we can. And then we'd like to also um, close in the same way that we begin. Uh, one of the things that we talk about in our workshop is the importance of ritual. Uh, the importance of ritual it does two primary things. It traps our attention and our intention. So that way we can, you know, close out one experience and honor that experience and then to come into the next experience. Because if we don't have ritual and we're not able to trap our attention and intention, then we carry one experience to the next, to the next, and to the next. And so discernment is important. And so to honor our presentation and that positive energy in medicine, uh, we would like to uh, call in Delia. Uh, to, um, we would really appreciate uh, a closing prayer as we move on uh, from this beautiful experience and with our families and our children. And so then from here, we will go on to our next space and where we go. So thank you, Delia. Oh, I want to say thank you for what Nico and Buster had to offer. It was very, um, my granddaughter was here, so we were laughing. She was laughing and she said, Grandma, we're going to have to do these things. So that was really nice. But um, I'd like everyone to, I don't know the young girl, but there was a 12-year-old girl that overdosed. And tomorrow they're having a vigil for her candlelight vigil. That's all that I know about it. I don't know the person, but keep her in our prayers. And I'd like to say, I carry your heart. I carry your heart. I carry your heart in my heart. And with that, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Delia. Thank you for joining us and for blessing us with your presence and with your generosity, with your love, and to also welcome us in your home, too. <laughs> with all the coins on. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for allowing us to be in your space.